So you're thinking about moving to Miami, Florida. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you 27 things that you need to know about when living in Miami, Florida. And we're gonna jump into it right now. Welcome back, and if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about living in Miami, Florida, then subscribe below and tap that bell for notification so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. My name is Raymond Goedi Gostadi, and I'm a full-time Florida realtor in the Miami area with your Living in Miami, Florida team. We get calls, texts, and emails every day from people just like you looking to make their move to Miami, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're moving soon, 90 days from now, a year from now, make sure to reach out to us Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. However you want to get a hold of us, we got your back when making that smooth move to Miami, Florida. All right, the number one thing that you need to know about is that when people talk about Miami, they are talking about Miami-Dade County and doesn't necessarily mean that they're talking about the city of Miami because the city of Miami is a smaller area within the whole metropolitan area of Miami. And it's the Brickle area, the downtown area, the east side where Miami started, and that's considered the city of Miami. The Miami-Dade County area is a much larger area that goes all the way from the north side by Miami Gardens, all the way down to Homestead, which is getting to the Florida Keys. The city of Miami is within Miami-Dade County. So when they say Miami, just um, understand that we're talking about Miami-Dade. Now, number two is the diversity. Down here, we have people from all over the world, all over the country, all walks of life, with different backgrounds, different cultures, different ways of doing things, which brings a lot of excitement and a lot of dynamic um, activities down here in Miami. Uh, one of the great things of that diversity brings is the food. If you like eating out, you're gonna be able to taste foods from all over the world. Uh, you're gonna hear languages from all over the world. Obviously, the most influential culture we have down here is a hispanic culture mostly a cuban a latin american caribbean a culture is a, a big influence here in miami but we have people from everywhere and uh, every year it seems that we're getting more people coming to miami which is great because miami has its own flavor it's not its own cookie cutter city and so you can bring your own cultures and enjoy your own way of life within Miami. So no matter where you're from, you'll fit right in Miami. Number three is tourists. Get used to living with tourists because Miami is a destination vacation spot, especially the beach side, which is Miami Beach. But even Miami, eh, we get tour tourism is a huge um, industry in our city in Miami. So and that allows us actually the whole state of Florida but especially Miami, we get a lot of tourists down here. So living down here, you will learn what are your tur tourist areas and which ones are not. So maybe you don't wanna go there, you can stay away. But you just gotta learn how to deal with our visitors, which are very important to the economy of our city. Makes the city run, brings a lot of money here. That's one of the reasons why in Florida, we have no state income tax because our tourism is a huge industry. So we gotta make sure we keep it that way. Just get used to living with tourists. Not a bad thing, just after a while, you'll learn which are the touristy spots and, and which are the local spots. Number four is a nightlife. Down here, if you've heard all throughout your life, if you heard about anything about Miami, we like to party. Down here, you can party like nowhere else in the country, maybe in the world. Clubs don't close here. They don't close here. They just go all the way to the next morning. There's many nightlife activities to do from lounges, rooftop bars, clubs. The nightlife here is huge. So if you like to party 24 seven, then Miami is gonna be your city. You're gonna love it. So that's something to consider. Now, if you're not the party type, don't worry. It's not something that's always in your daily life and you're gonna run into it every day. If you don't like to party, you're just not gonna be going out to the nightlife and it's totally fine. You can live a life here in Miami without enjoying that crazy 24 seven party. Dining is number five. If like I mentioned earlier, if you like to eat, and down here, our dining scene is top notch. We're actually getting our first, I think in the country, I don't know if they have one, maybe in LA, our first Michelin star restaurants in Miami. And Miami has a lot of fine dining restaurants with amazing world-class chefs. And so if you love eating out in not only fine dining, but even casual food, try all kinds of food down here. 
and it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be just a daily thing. You can you don't have to be bored of eating the same lunch. There's food trucks everywhere. There's events where there's constantly um, different kind of food um, being handed out. So you'll try anything from empanadas to flan to ceviche, uh, and you'll be um, amazed on the endless options that you will have dining out here in Miami, Florida. Number six is we run a Miami time. Now Miami time, what is Miami time? Well, it basically means fashionably late. So um, let's say you're meeting up a, a couple for dinner at seven o'clock and somebody, like a group of, of friends and everybody starts strolling at 715, 720, 730 and you're there at seven sharp, maybe a little earlier. Don't take it personal. It's just a Miami time and sometimes it's excuse like the traffic, but other time it's just a habit of not being there on time and just being a little bit late, especially to parties, people show up fast and be late. So it's something that you're gonna notice right away if you're a punctual uh, type of person. So don't take it personal, just learn to understand it and um, hopefully it won't rub on you and you won't run on Miami time as well. Number seven is that we actually, when we say hi and when we meet somebody, we kiss and we handshake and we give a bro hug. So uh, ladies, don't get scared when you're gonna go meet somebody or for the first time you're gonna say hi or they're gonna say hi to you and the gentleman leans over to give you a kiss or you lean, lean over to give a kiss to a lady. It's totally normal to give a kiss on the cheek even if you meet for the first time. It's just how we say hi down here and if you and uh, the gentleman, they give a handshake and a bro hug, bro hug, like if you know each other for many years. So it's just, I don't know, it's just, um, Miami are very passionate, very emotional. So I guess it's just the way we say hi down here. And it's normal, it's nothing to, to feel weird about. But if you're the type that doesn't like the affection, maybe be aware that when you meet somebody and they're gonna go lean in to give you a kiss, just put your hand out or say hi, however you want. But just a little heads up that we do kiss and give a handshake and like a bro hug every time we say hi. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button and comment below. This will help us to better understand what you wanna know about so we can provide better content for you guys in the future. Now, number eight, we speak Spanish down here. We actually speak Spanglish as well. So don't be afraid, we do speak English, but Spanish is our second language and you're gonna hear it all over the city. And you don't need to speak English, like I mentioned, but you don't need to speak Spanish. But if you do, it opens up a whole new world. You're able to enjoy the Spanish culture, understand it. Um, at least you won't be limited to uh, not enjoying all the cultural activities that Hispanics have. Uh, not only Cubans, but many other Hispanics that live in Miami. And so that's something to consider if, if you wanna live Miami to its fullest. You may want to understand it at least a little bit so when you're out there you know what people are talking about and you can sort of uh, be involved but don't worry you don't need to speak spanish uh, another thing we speak down here like i mentioned is spanglish spanglish is basically talking english and spanish in the same sentence for example uh, let's say i'm going out to eat i'm gonna say oh i'm going out to eat they'll say oh where are you going oh boy i eat a a comer at this restaurant that has the best food. Me encanta la comida ahí. And that is Spanglish. You're basically mixing English and Spanish in the same sentence, which is totally weird. At the beginning, you're gonna be like, what the heck are they talking about? But after a while, even if you don't speak Spanish, you'll be accustomed to it. You may even learn a few words or two. Another word you should get used to hearing is dale. Dale, when someone says hi or bye, let's say you're leaving and say, okay, see you later. People say, all right, dale. That just means like, bye, okay, see you later, go ahead. It, it can mean many different things. Just a little slang in, you should know about before moving to Miami, Florida, so you feel more like a local. Another thing that you need to know about is number nine, the weather. The weather here, I was gonna mention only heat, but let's talk about all the weather. It's very hot down here and very humid. So you're gonna be sweating as soon as you walk out, but. The beautiful thing about it is that when wintertime comes around, it's gonna be beautiful. 70 degrees always, and that is when everybody's really outside, and you're not sweating, it's not cold, it feels like the air conditioning is on outside every day, it doesn't rain, blue skies, that's when it's paradise, the best time to be here. And basically that's when most of the people from the US, anywhere else in the world come down to Miami. In the winter, the beginning of spring, 
and basically that's when we have all our events and festivals and so the weather here is fa is fabulous uh we do have some hot summers but it's only a short summer and the rest is really nice number 10 transportation you're gonna need a car living in miami florida it's just like i mentioned earlier miami is not only the city of miami it's miami dade county it's very spread out with many streets and roads and highways um so if you want to get around efficiently definitely you're gonna need a car and because if you uber it's gonna get expensive although public transportation is so so people say it's bad i don't think it's that bad for a major city you can't compare it to new york or chicago in certain areas to have a good public transportation so we're sort of slacking as a big city but we do have metro buses that go all over the city all over the miami which is miami dade county we have the metro rail which that one basically goes to the city of miami the north and south we have the metro mover which goes in a loop downtown in brickle uh, and certain in neighborhoods like Coral Gables and Doral and Brickell have their own trolley system that goes up and down, which is great if you work there. So you can use it to go lunch and come back. And so there's many little public transportation you can use, but you definitely need a car if you want to get around effectively and efficiently and, and not waste any time. Number 11 is cafecito time. In Miami, we love our cafecito. What is cafecito? Well, it's Cuban espresso. It's an espresso, but it's basically made at the same time as being brewed. You're mixing it with sugar to get that extra foam on top, which we call it the espumita. The espumita is that extra creamy layer on top of that espresso. So it's a, a sweet sugary espresso that tastes amazing. Not only does it taste amazing if you like coffee, but it, it's a jolt of caffeine. We call it our liquid crack down here because if you like coffee, you like drinking it, you will be hooked. The only people who don't drink coffee is cafecito down here are the tourists or people who just moved. But if you like coffee and you try it, you'll be hooked. Typically, cafecito is in the afternoon. Actually, the mayor of Miami a few years ago um, did a proclamation that 305 is now officially cafecito time. Why 305? Because that's our area code. We have a phone number down here. Now we have another 176 because we're growing so much, but our main area code is 305. You've probably heard the rapper Pitbull say Mr. 305, and that is why he says it because 305 is our area code, our original area code, and cafecito time is now 305 p.m. sharp. I love my cafecito. I actually drink cafe con leche in the mornings, which is basically a cafecito with hot milk, like a latte but a little stronger and i have my cafecito in the afternoon so that's something if you like coffee you're gonna love we do have starbucks and other little coffee shops boutique coffee shops but cafecito is uh, the most popular down here in miami and you will have you will have ventanitas all over the city of miami actually probably more than starbucks ventanita is basically a window in a restaurant where you just stand on the, on the window and order a cafecito or pastelitos, empanadas, any other pastries that you like. So you'll get used to it when living down here, you'll see it all over the city, which is pretty cool. Nowhere else will you see this, I promise. Number 12 are events and festivals. As we discussed earlier, that's uh, the end of winter, the springtime is when we have all our events and festivals. Miami takes their, their events very seriously. We have one of the largest one day festivals called Calle Ocho. In, which is um, in springtime and it's basically, I don't know how many, 20 something blocks down from downtown to a historic side of H streets of just live music, uh, food from all kinds of cultures and uh, people walking and dancing all over the street. It's art everywhere. It's just one huge festival. That's a, that was one of the biggest ones. We have also Carnival on the Mile in Coral Gables, which is an art and music festival. The art festival in Coconut Grove, which is popular. In Wynwood, we have the Art Basil, which has extended into more areas than just Wynwood, uh, which is huge internationally, worldwide, a uh, high-end arts. We have the Boat Show, the Air and Sea Show, endless events and festivals. And not to mention that we have high-end concerts. We have big-time concerts all throughout the year coming to Miami. So that's a beautiful thing about being a big city. All the big time events and music concerts, they come to your town at least once a year. Number 13 is the art scene is booming. 
mentioned earlier in Wynwood that art festival the art down here is really taken off maybe the last 10 or 12 years but especially in the Wynwood area the downtown Brickell the urban area art seems to be all over the place and the county and the government has done a, um, a very good job in incorporating arts into Miami all over the city so it's slowly but surely becoming a very artistic town as of now still only the urban area but it's booming and it's growing at a fast rate number 14 miami is very affordable believe it or not you can live in miami and it'd be affordable you can eat you can buy you know regular clothes you can buy decent cars so you can have your a daily a lifestyle and live within your means now where miami gets very expensive is in the nightlife, the eating out, the dining, the going out, the leisure, the day trips, all the fun things that Miami has to offer, it could get very expensive. Now we have a lot of free activities, we have a lot of activities that are uh, less expensive, especially if you have family and kids, so that's why I say Miami could be very affordable. But on the flip side, the pay is not that well overall as a big city. Uh, we do have a lot of jobs, but compared to other major cities, our pay is not as good as, as the rest of the, the bigger cities. So Miami could be affordable. It could also be very, very expensive. So it's not only for the very wealthy. It could be for the middle class, working class. And there's many suburbs, many neighborhoods uh, where you can live within your means. Number 15, Miami is a fashion city. We love our fashion. Down here, we have, well, there's a Miami Fashion Week, Miami Swim Week. So if you're into fashion, this is like the Mecca, Miami and Miami Beach. A lot of the models come and live here. The design district has become a very important place for fashion as all the fashion brands are there, located there. People love to dress up and, and wear the trendiest clothes, wear the latest fashion. So uh, Miami is a city where we don't dress down, we actually dress up. And that is one of the things I wanted to mention about the fashion in Miami. You will see people in not only going out and dressing up, just casually being outside, dressed like if they were going to a high-end party. They just like in dressing up and being very fashionable. They love their, their trends, especially the women. They definitely are up to, up to speed and uh, with the latest fashion that's going on in the world. Number 16, Miami is not Miami Beach. I know people get confused, especially in the news. People always mix Miami, Miami Beach. Miami is separated by the intercoastal. So on Brickell, downtown area, Miami ends there. It goes up north Miami. But the intercoastal that goes through there separates Miami from Miami Beach. Miami Beach extends from the south beach all the way to the north. It's a very long strip of land and it has its own economy, booming economy. It's very touristy. It obviously has the beaches, so it's a separate economy. I, obviously, if you live in Miami, you will definitely be going to Miami Beach. Uh, maybe the South Beach parts you want to stay away from, but you can still go, but it's very touristy. Just a little heads up. So you're going to run into a lot of tourists in that part of, of Miami Beach. Just so you are aware, so you won't get confused. And when you're talking, Miami and Miami Beach are two separate areas. Although it's still considered under Miami-Dade County, but they're two separate economies. And once you live down here, you'll, you'll notice the difference. If you live in Miami Beach, most likely you'll be staying around that area. Number 17, South Beach. Something we just touched on right now. South Beach is one of the most popular, famous uh, destinations in Miami Beach and all of Miami-Dade County. It's where you come for vacation, especially if you're young and you wanna come to the beach and party and mingle. And if you're single, um, there's just parties, endless parties, day parties, night parties. It's just a lot of things to do down, down there. You will not be bored. Maybe two or three days will be enough, um, but it's a lot of energy in South Beach and a lot of fun, but it's a destination where it's definitely more tourist. So if you come and live in here, you may be going there, but um, maybe you want to stay away from, from all the touristy areas because if you go out there, be ready to pay uh, expensive drinks, expensive food, because you're gonna be in an area where they're charging more because it's a tourist location. Number 18, the only city that is surrounded by two national parks is Miami. Miami has the Biscayne National Park on the east side, 
and it has the Everglades National Park on the west side. So we have two national parks, which is awesome. If, you, For example, if you like to go boating and fishing, either one of those has great fishing. You can go out there. Um, obviously, the Everglades has gators too, but people think the Everglades National Park is only swamps. No, Everglades National Park extends out to, to the ocean, and there's great um, shoreline fishing by there, uh, offshore fishing. So if you love that, that is a, a fabulous thing that where we're located at. And besides having the Keys and the Tip, we also have the Biscayne National Park where you can go out on the boat and go fishing. So if you love being on the water and you love being outdoors, we have two great national parks that they take care of. And it's just a privilege being in between these two and to go fishing and boating and whatever water activity you wanna do. Number 19. You can live a glam life in Miami. Now, uh, like we mentioned earlier, it could be very affordable, but if you want to live high-end luxury and you like the glam life, Miami is a place that you will love because you're going to see fancy cars everywhere, left and right. Maybe when you come down here, you'll be shocked of how many luxury cars and exotic cars you'll see, but they're everywhere. Um, after a while, you'll get used to it. If people like to show off down here, and whether they have money or maybe they don't, but they still want to uh, be able to, to show off as much as they can. And so that's something that you're going to notice right away. The glam life is something that you can live down here in Miami. Number 20, we have no state income tax. Obviously, it's the state of Florida, but living in Miami, you have that, that nice benefit, that nice perk where there's no state income tax. We do have sales tax, which is a 7% sales tax of everything you purchase. But when it comes to your income tax, you pay your federal and that's it. No state income tax, which is which is great. And like I mentioned earlier, the tourism is what allows for this benefit. So we make so much money in tourism that they don't need to charge the residents for any more tax. So that's something to take advantage of living down here. And I think that's one of the reasons most people move down here to save um, money, you'll save a lot of money. Now, maybe that's why our wages are a little low, but I guess it balances itself out. Number 21, sports is a big thing down here. We have the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Heat, the Miami Marlins, and we have the Florida Panthers. Now, we love our sports down here, but we tend to be a bandwagon sports fan base. And so if the team is winning, you will see everybody with a, with a shirt. Let's say the Miami Heat are winning. Everybody's going out with a Miami Heat shirt, going to the games, watching the games, talking about it. But if they start losing, like for example, with the Marlins, when they won the first World Series, everybody was on a high, and then they just tore that team down, and we had to start from scratch. People down here like winning, like they're proud of their, their city, and they wanna, they're very competitive. So when they start losing, they don't even bother going to the games or watching or talking about it. And there is also so many things to do down here that you'll go out and you'll do something else. Too many activities to compete, to go to watch a game where it's not that competitive. The only team that really um, has a true fan base and is our, our first professional team are the Miami Dolphins. We love our Miami Dolphins down here. Win or lose, obviously we want to win. But even if they lose, we'll be upset. But we'll continue to watch and continue to have that hope and ever since Dan Marino left the Dolphins, we've been trying to find the next Dan Marino, which has not happened. I don't know when is he's coming, but we're still rooting for the Miami Dolphins. So go Fins. And that's something that we're very proud of the Dolphins down here. Number 22, our day trips. We are lucky to live in Miami to, in a location where we have many day trips to go to. One of the most popular is driving to the Keys. You don't need to stay, you can just drive a day, enjoy, either go fishing or enjoy some little beaches go enjoy the dining scene you can go all the way to key west or just go to key largo which is the first key you can also take a trip to the bahamas or bimini believe it or not you just take a boat ride over there and you can come back the same day some people actually take the weekend and they go over there but those are two of the most popular trips you can take or there's a lot of stay vacations so called staycations within miami obviously we have miami beach all the beaches down the coast and so there's a lot of things that you could do and make miami your own a uh, little getaway or places nearby like the keys the bahamas or Bimini's. number 23 we have many transplants what is a transplant well transplants are people 
maybe like you are considering to move to Miami and you're from another city, another state. So Miami has a lot of locals, but we have a lot of people that live in Miami that are from another place. And that is how Miami has it sort of developed into a very diverse and cultural city, not only different countries, but within our own country, everybody has their own style. So you can be yourself in Miami because we are a bunch of different people from everywhere. So transfer could be someone from New York, from California. They come to Miami, they fall in love and they live down here and they get to have their own lifestyle within Miami. There's also the locals who have been living down here generation after generation but lately there's been a lot of people moving to miami so the local generational miamians are starting to fade away and the new generation from all over the world and the country are coming in which is awesome i actually enjoy it get to meet people in different ways of life of how they do it in their own city state or country number 24 palm trees you're gonna notice as soon as you get here there's palm trees everywhere Actually, Miami is not a tropical area. We're a subtropical area. That's why we have the Everglades, one of the most unique ecosystems in all the world. But we have palm trees all over Miami-Dade County. And you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it because I remember one of my friends when he came down, uh, we sort of take it for granted living down here, get to use to seeing palm trees, beautiful sunny days. And he was amazed on how many palm trees there were just driving down the highway, the neighborhoods, Everywhere you go, there was palm trees and he, he loved it. He was like, this is paradise. Just the, the, the thought of living in sunshine, a beautiful weather, palm trees close to the water, the beaches. It's like a vacation land. We have also many other big trees. We have oak trees, all kind of big trees, especially in the Coral Gables area, Coconut Grove. But you're gonna notice that there's palm trees all over Miami. Number 25, boating. I talked about this early on day trips but and on the, the parks. If you like boating, this is paradise. You're gonna have endless options to go out on a boat. You can have it, you can store it in your house on a trailer. You can store it at the marina, wet dock, dry dock. You can take it out anywhere from, you can go to the Keys, you can go to Biscayne a National Park and take it out by there. Everglades National Park, up the coast by Miami Beach. Endless marinas where you can just drop off the boat and go out fishing, whether you wanna go just around inshore or you wanna go very, far deep sea fishing. So if you love boating, maybe think about buying a boat or if you already have one, bring it on over to Miami. And if you don't, don't worry. I am sure you're gonna have friends and run into somebody who has a boat, who will definitely invite you. And you'll definitely be out there on a boat in one day or two. And maybe you'll fall in love with it and buy a boat. So that's something that's um, very popular down here. Even if you don't have a boat, you'll be going out boat boating in Miami. So. That's something that is very Miami. Number 26, Miamians are very proud. We are 305 Pride. Miamians think that we have the best city in the world. This is the best way to live. Miami is, is one of the best cities. So they are very proud of their city and they think it's definitely the best. Miami is a great city. Obviously, I love Miami, born and raised here. And, but obviously there's other major cities that are just as good. And they all have their own different flavors, but People who live in Miami, they are very proud of their of their city and their culture and how unique we are compared to everywhere else in the US. Number 27, you may be motivated to work out. Living down here, like I mentioned, all the things that, that we talked about, Miami is a beautiful place. It's a vacation spot, sunshine, palm trees everywhere. So you may wanna go to the beach a lot, boating. You're gonna be uh, conscious on how your fitness is, how your your health is and you want to probably look good in your bathing suit and your swimsuits and so everybody down here in, is very conscious of their body and they want to be as fit as possible because we don't wear much clothing down here it's super hot very humid especially in the summertime you want to wear nice swimsuits even if you're not going to the beach you want to wear clothing that is light thin clothing clothing maybe shapes your body so people like to show off their body down here which is great because i always believe in fitness very important if you want to have a healthy lifestyle but you'll notice that after a while you may be like you know what i'm gonna start working out hit the gym and get the the exercise fitness bug and and get going and become as fit as possible down here we have crossfits there's all types of gyms of the popular high-end the boutiques people work out in the parks by the beach 
uh, groups of cyclers, all kind of exercises that you can do down here when living in Miami, Florida. So there you have it. Those are 27 things that you need to know about when living in Miami, Florida. If any of these things are something that you think you might enjoy, uh, also when you're moving down here, now you won't feel so much like a tourist or an, a transplant. You'll feel a little bit more like a local uh, and you can fit right in as soon as you make that smooth move to Miami, Florida. So make sure to reach out to us, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, however you want to get a hold of us. We got your back. We're making that smooth move to Miami, Florida. Until next time, we'll see you later.